Imagine if artificial intelligence was not just a tool, but a decision maker. In Albania, a few weeks ago, an AI tool called Diela was appointed to a ministerial role with the goal to make governmental services more efficient and transparent. This avant-garde move raises a crucial question. As AI is becoming a part of our daily lives, who sets the rules? In Europe, it is the EU AI Act, the first comprehensive legal framework for artificial intelligence in the world. It is a landmark regulation designed to stimulate tech innovation while still protecting fundamental rights. But how can you really regulate something that evolves almost daily? The EU's answer is a unique risk-based approach a tier system that classifies AI systems based on their potential to cause harm. At the top are unacceptable risk AI systems, which are outright banned. These include AI systems used for social scoring by governments, like systems that grant or deny public services based on behavior. Real-time biometric identification in public spaces is also mostly prohibited, with only a few exceptions for serious crime. Next are high-risk AI systems. These are allowed, but come with many obligations. This category includes AI used in critical infrastructure, like managing electricity grids, or used in essential public services, such as evaluating people's credit worthiness. AI in employment also falls in this category. These systems must meet requirements for data quality, accuracy, human oversight, transparency, and cybersecurity. Companies deploying high-risk AI will also need to conduct fundamental rights impact assessments to make sure they don't harm vulnerable groups disproportionately. The numbers show why this is critical. Almost 70% of companies are projected to use AI systems in the HR processes by 2027 for resume screening or performance evaluation. Furthermore, the adoption of AI in critical infrastructure is expected to surge by over 27% in the next five years. Below that are limited risk systems, which mostly include transparency obligations. For example, chatbots and deepfakes must clearly state that they are AI generated. Finally, minimal risk AI, such as spam filters or video games, face very few restrictions, encouraging innovation in areas which have very little potential for harm. However, some argue that its complexity and compliance costs could inhibit European innovation, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises. Others worry that the definitions of high risk might not keep up with evolving technology, which would leave loopholes. The economic stakes are huge, with the global AI market projected to grow from $230 billion last year to over $1.7 trillion by 2032. The EU AI Act is a global experiment. Will this model inspire the rest of the world to provide legal framework for artificial intelligence? Remains to be seen. Stay tuned for more.